Welcome to part two of underrated Nintendo Switch games that we feel like not enough people played. We are gonna continue the discussion from the previous video that I called the exact same title. It's just that this is part two with other YouTubers invited to this collab. This time we will hear from Nintendo Gaming, Fem Trooper, Jordan from Switch Watch, Josh's Gaming Garden, and Happy Console Gamer. I recommend that you listen closely to their choices. A lot of their choices I had never heard about before. And if you have never heard about them, maybe they are underrated, maybe not enough people played them. Leave a comment down below, of course, if you agree or disagree, or if you have any other games you want to add to this conversation. The previous video had a lot of good suggestions in the comment section, that was a fun read. But let's start off with Happy Console Gamers' choice. Thanks for having me, Irene. And one game that I feel that not enough people have played, a very underappreciated game that is a hidden gem, and that is for Live Alive on the Nintendo Switch. Now, this is a bit of a cult classic already. It came out only a few years ago in 2022. It is a remake of a Super Famicom game that came out in 1994, and I remember seeing it in video game magazines going, when's it coming out over here? And it never did until 2022. We got a really nice remake of the original game, all updated. And what is this game? You play as many different lives throughout. So what I love about it is there's many varying degrees of gameplay and characters. So you can play an old gunman back in the old west, or you can be playing in the super future. And why I recommend the game is that with each character that you pick, you can pick them in any order that you want, you play through their lives. And their lives only take a couple of hours, two to three hours to get through their storyline, and then you're on to the next character. So it's a great game to kind of pick up and play and put down. You get to just pick somebody's life, you play through it, you finish it, and then the next night you're onto something completely different. And that's what I like, even the combat is very different from one game to the next. And it's unique and it's fascinating, and it's a game that's so underappreciated. And it's one of those ones where all of the characters, everything comes together at the end, and it's very, very fulfilling. A beautiful game on the Nintendo Switch, and a high recommendation. If you are for some reason not subscribed to Happy Console Gamer, what are you doing with your life? Uh, go subscribe. His channel is one of the first gaming channels that I found on YouTube ever. We are talking 10 plus years ago. I've been a vivid watcher and a big fan of his channel ever since. Also a big inspiration for this channel. Now next up we have a really cute YouTuber called Nintendo Gaming. Hello, my name is Min from the channel Nintendo Gaming here on YouTube. Today I'm going to share a Nintendo Switch game that I feel like not enough people have played. The game I'm going to highlight today is called Beacon Pines. This game has a mix between eerie vibes and cute vibes, and I am not someone who likes scary stuff, so don't worry, it's not that. <laughs> Although this game looks cute, be aware that it does have some darker themes throughout the game. It is a narrative-driven game where you play as both the main character, Luca, but also as the reader of the book, because this game's story is told through a storybook. It even has voice-acted narration, which is really good. The main storyline follows Luca and his friends as they try to uncover the peculiar things that continue to happen in town, such as the disappearance of his mother. As you explore in the game, you'll come across different words and these words you collect and then use them to fill in the chapters of the book. And you must find the right combination of words to complete the story in the correct order way. But don't worry if you get something wrong, you'll play that storyline out anyways, and in doing so, you will learn things that allow you as the reader to delve even deeper into the story, getting more background information, and sometimes knowing even more than Luca knows. And each time Luca plays the chapter out, he is playing it out as if it's for the first time, where you as the reader have seen the other storylines. So you end up knowing more than him 
which is a really interesting part of this game. So you're gonna have to play it to see what that's like for yourself. This game is called Beacon Pines and it is a wonderful mix of different vibes and it's a super endearing playthrough overall. I highly recommend it. And thanks again, Isha, for including me in this video. I have loved your channel for a really long time and it is really cool to be on your channel today. So thank you, thank you so much. Absolutely a hidden gem channel. She does a lot of live streams, plays a lot of farming games, the games that you and I like. Go check out Nintendo Gaming, definitely. Now we are gonna get super cozy and step into a green garden. The green grass gaming garden of YouTube, basically. Yoshi's Gaming Garden. I was recently on his podcast, the link to that down below if you wanna hear us talk about the Harvest Moon series for over one hour. Highly recommend that one as well. Now here is Josh's choice. Hi everyone and thank you Isha for having me. My name is Josh and my pick for an underrated Switch game is Pixel Cross Story of Seasons. You've probably heard of nonogram puzzles before, the Picross series in particular has been around for a very long time, but if you're like me you may have overlooked these games thinking they were just not interesting enough. Earlier this year Pixel Cross Story of Seasons released and as someone who loves Story of Seasons I had to try it out even though I did not know anything about nonograms. Basically, you have these grids with numbers that tell you how many blocks have to be filled out in each line, and at the end, you are rewarded with an image, which in this specific game are all crops, items, or characters from the Story of Seasons series. The game does a great job at explaining it for beginners, and it has a lot of different settings, so you can customize your experience and make things easier if you'd like. I wasn't sure what to expect, but I quickly found myself completely addicted. It's so easy to just pick up your Switch, play for 10 to 30 minutes to complete a few puzzles. It is good for your brain, but it's also extremely relaxing and satisfying. If you like Story of Seasons, you will have fun trying to guess each picture as it's taking shape. You will also enjoy the music, as well as your farm slowly evolving through the seasons in the background. If you don't care for Story of Seasons, other options include Pixel Cross Adventure, where you get to explore and restore a town. Picto Quest is another one that adds light RPG elements. Or if you're looking for just pure puzzles, the Switch has a ton of classic Picross games. These games are so fun to play between bigger titles, they will last you a long time with their hundreds of puzzles, and they often go on sale. I think every Switch player should have at least one in their library, and I wish I had gotten into them earlier. Now, I very much enjoy watching Jordan's Let's Get Physical series. He puts so much work into all of his videos. Highly recommend subscribing to this guy as well. Jordan from Switchwatch, they have two YouTube channels. I mean, he is a part of Switchwatch, but he also has his own little channel. Subscribe to them both, obviously. Now here is Jordan's choice. Hello everyone, how you doing? It's Jordan here. Now, when Ursha asked me what my most underrated game on the Switch is, the one that more people need to play, I thought, you know what, I'm gonna delve pretty deep with this one. Not enough people I've heard of before The Green Moon. I really like this game a lot. It released digitally on the Switch earlier this year, and I love it. On the surface, it looks like a Harvest Moon wannabe. We've got more cozy farming life sim games on the Switch that we are drowning in comfy blankets. We're probably a bit fatigued by them nowadays, but Before the Green Moon is the tonic for the fatigue. This is a game that feels like it's Harvest Moon if it was released on the Dreamcast. So it has that older school sensibilities, it's lacking in bloat, it has an identity, it was made with heart, and when it comes to the Dreamcast, of course, it has to be a bit quirky. It has farming mechanics, but it's really not the focus. The focus is on the lives of those in a depressing town in a post-apocalyptic world, as most people have emigrated to the giant green moon above, and that is your target. You want to earn enough money to buy your ticket off this rock, but it's so much deeper and wholesome than that. Part of the charm is just walking into town and bumping into cutscenes with the townsfolk. The cast is small, but that makes you bond with them that much easier. And there are so many of these cutscenes, and most of them for my frozen heart good. You can earn money as fast or as slow as you want, and I bet some of you will fall so much in love with this ramshackle town that you'll purposely be planting your crops as slowly as possible. It is such a cute game that I highly recommend specifically 
greatly to fans of Harvest Moon 64 and those who are fans of the Dreamcast. It's a game that's familiar but unique at the same time. And that's what I recommend to you guys. Sorry, Urshid, probably not going to help you with the algorithm on this one with this choice, but you know, I think more people should play Before the Green Moon. Go play it right now. Gotta say, there's so many games that I've never heard about. I would never hear about these if it wasn't for making this collab with these people. And basically, when I reached out to these guys, I just said, which game on the Nintendo Switch do you feel like not enough people played? And you know, that could be anything. Could even be Astral Chain, if you feel that not enough people played it. I know a lot of people has played Astral Chain, but it's so good that I feel like even more people could play it. Let's hear about another game then. This one is from Femtrooper. Hey everybody, it's Femtrooper, and thank you to Irsha Gaming for having me on today. I am so excited to talk about a game on the Switch that I feel like a lot of people just didn't play. I think it's super underrated because it's one of my favorite Switch games, and that is Paper Mario The Origami King. So many people wrote this one off because it doesn't have JRPG elements in it, but that's okay because it's not a JRPG and it's really good. This has a really cool story. It's super creepy. I mean, the whole origami thing was incredibly creative. I love the, the aesthetic, the way the characters look. It's really, really fun. And I have to say, while it's not a conventional battle system, it's really strange. The battle system is incredible in this game. If you're willing to learn something completely new, completely wacky, give this game a shot. I mean, I did it. I beat this game. I really enjoyed it. Yeah, you don't gain experience points and some people are like, then why do we even have battles? Because it's fun. Because it's a video game. And I really, really enjoyed it. It's very, very bizarre. It's very strange. Each area that you go to is super cool, super unique. I really liked all the towns in this game. So it has RPG elements. It's just not a full-blown RPG, and that's okay. It's just a really cool game. I definitely think you should check this out if you didn't play it, because it is worth your time. It's a really neat game. It has great writing, has great characters. There's so much going on here that's great. It just isn't a JRPG, and that's okay. I think people wanted it to be one, and it wasn't, but that's fine. It's not, and it's a wonderful game. Again, so happy to be part of this collab. Any excuse to talk about the Origami King, honestly, it's a really cool game. And I hope to see you guys over at my channel. Femtrooper is also another YouTube channel that has been going strong for so many years now. Also, subscribe to this one. Now, a lot of good games has been mentioned, and a few of these games, I may end up checking them out more. Maybe getting a few of them. Definitely such an interesting topic, now that we're nearing the Switch's end. Now, which game am I gonna highlight? I mean, if you have been around on my channel, I talk about a lot of Switch games that no one <laughs> almost said likes. Uh, that uh, not, okay, let's say, the majority of the mainstream doesn't know about. I'm gonna put it like that, okay? Like the Atelier series, I still think more people should play them. And I guess my quick answer to where could you start could be Sophie 2. Actually could be because of all of the quality of features. Quality of features? <laughs> because of all of the quality of life features. It has a very interesting story. It has like an isekai story, if you know what that is. It's kind of like how Narnia is. You're stepping into another world. And in this world, time stands still for the real world. That's like interesting in itself. So story is definitely a strong point of Atelier Sophie 2. I was paying attention all the way. I couldn't wait for more of the story bits actually. Also it has all of the addicting gameplay that I love from other Atelier games. Such a strong entry. Can't wait for the next Atelier announcement though. Also Risa start anywhere in the Risa series. I still feel like not enough people has played Atelier, but I mean they're so good. It's definitely something that I feel like my channel is like known for, me talking about this series. But also like the gameplay loop is addicting and has such a depth to it. I have a playlist, okay? I'm gonna redirect you there so you can deep dive more into the series, I mean. And if you have played one and enjoyed it, you're very likely to enjoy another Atelier game. Some other games that I feel like not enough people played. Obviously Astral Chain, but I have already mentioned that. You know, over the years, I keep thinking back on this game. 
It came out pretty early in the Switch's life cycle. And I, I still think about it. And I never hear anyone talk about it except for me. <laughs> and that is Fire Emblem Warriors, the first Warriors. You also have the other one. But this one is just better. It's smoother. I like the gameplay mechanics. I just like the entire Warriors gameplay loop. There's a big battlefield. You have several units that you control, switch between. And there's a lot of tactic involved, but not too much. You can still mindlessly play this game. Be on the phone, talk with someone that talks a lot while you're playing it. I mean, that's sort of mindless also, but it's just so satisfying. Graphics are decent, actually holding very much up now in 2024 still. I have no idea why this wasn't more of a success than it was. Okay, that was all for this video. Thank you everyone for joining the collab. You guys are the best. And I'm so happy that everyone that I asked to join this small collab said yes to me. Hand-picked selection, the prime best of YouTube, sort of, are these people. And also from the first video, link to that also down below. Now this wouldn't be possible if it wasn't for people watching me here on YouTube. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you later.